Welcome to more Spring Championship of Online Poker 2013 goodness. This is event 10. The highlights of the final table for the $2,100 No Limit Hold'em Super Knockout KO. Nice. 600k guaranteed. 662 runners bust that guarantee. As you can see, split into the regular prize pool and the bounty prize pool, you get a special gift you can keep if you knock out a player at just over a thousand bucks. It's a fun format. I'm sure you've played in it yourself at some level or other. It really is popular these days. Here's your final table. Come on, top deck is in front. Huge amount of bounties collected by that player as well. I'll tell you their bounty totals when they get eliminated. Yadio in second and Super Kid Bam in third as we join the action. And the more observant among you will note that we're joining in hand 111. This is an extremely long final table. Obviously, this is a highlight show, so we have to bring you, well, the highlights. You're ahead of me. But uh, almost two hours before we got our first player eliminated. Hasn't happened yet. We're going to join it nine-handed. European from Finland, who's having a fantastic scoop, came runner-up in event one of this year's festival. And uh, you can see that on Pokestars.tv right now. Big cooler here, as you can tell. Ace-King, Ace-Queen and Kings. And that's just not fair, is it? Chip leader collected a huge amount of bounties already, and you get dealt kings with a raise and a call in front of you. Obviously, this three bet looks super strong based on his position at the table, but I don't think there's too much Europeans going to be able to do about it with ace king and starting the hand with just under 26 blinds. The money's going in. Yadio might get saved, however from what was a pretty nasty cooler with him in European. Yeah, European doesn't take long to think about this one, the only option you feel. And yeah, you're probably not feeling great about Ace-Queen. That hits the mark. Come on, top deck. UK player has a present at this final table. European can still get out of it, though, of course. Needs to, to survive in this tournament. Couple of hearts, couple more would suit him, or an ace. Two of spades is a brick, so just an ace on the river can get European out of this hole, and it doesn't come. Come on, top deck. Takes it down, 1.3 million for him. European from Finland out in ninth spot, $10,178 and $8,000 in bounties for his trouble. We are eight-handed, and this is hand 118. And Dr. Upswing is shoving 10 big blinds with ace-9 in the cutoff. That seems pretty fair enough to me. For Haley, we'll call with ace-queen. And Dr. Upswing's tournament will be at risk here. Needs to catch a 9 or some kind of straight, which is possible on this flop. Not so much anymore. Just a 9 on the river. Or we could have chopped it up, but that's not going to happen. Dr. Upswing is down swinging out of here, I'm afraid. Eighth place for the German player, $15,000 and change. He just collected one bounty, just $1,000 of free treat gifts to keep. But still a nice haul from this tournament, and he leaves us seven-handed. Yadio opening hand number 179 from the cutoff with the queen and jack. Natarin. That G is silent. I know that. He uh, mailed me to tell me. Natarin from Sweden has the suited connector. Not a huge amount of room for manoeuvre with these stacks. Enough to defend the big blind, though, he deems. And we'll see a flop. Natarin probably been on a highlight show before because he's made a Sunday million final table. And he's got a tricksy flop here. He hits middle pair, but as you can see, Yadio has top pair. Yadio has a great pedigree, runner-up to WCOOP in 2009. He's also won the Super Tuesday. And he's going to continue here with top pair. And you'd expect a Taran to call, and he does do that with middle pair and some backdoor draws. And that's a bingo. Six on the turn. 
the tower and vaults to the lead. Two pair good. One pair bad. Tough for Yadio. Depends how he views this, whether he thinks he can get value on the turn and the river. We know the terrible truth that he's been outdrawn, but obviously the board still looks pretty good for him, and he'll go ahead and bet. Now, how does Nataran want to play this? Does look like a quite a drawy board, so it's going to be tough for Yadio to get away from his top pair here. Probably shouldn't be getting away from his top pair. Nataran with the flat call, 200,000 in the middle, just over a pot size bet left for the Swedish player with two pair. And the turn diamonds completes a backdoor diamond draw. If Nataran does check again, it'd be interesting to see if Yadio bets for value. Judgment call for him. He can see that his opponent will be basically put to a decision for his tournament. Don't know if that will affect it, his thinking at all. A couple of shorter stacks still in this tournament. Shorter than the Terran, I mean. And Yadio will check it back. I imagine that was a reasonably close decision, trying to decide whether to value bet his top pair or not. And he gets the bad news. Nice pot for Gnataran. 6,000, 12,000 blinds is still the order of the day in hand 180. For Haley. opens under the gun for the minimum. And Yadio will flat call with the ace jack suited. Jectis gets out of the way. And so does come on top deck. Nataran with the decision in the small blind with pocket eights. Just under 40 big blinds in his stack. And plenty of chips behind. Two players in the pot, so he makes the flat call with the eights. We'll go three way to the flop. And Taran's going to be first to speak. And a little bit of improvement for his two opponents. Yadio catches middle pair, but for Haley catches top pair. 69%. Brilliant. I don't think the Saren will be too interested in this one. Not a great flop. Pretty unlikely that neither of his two opponents will have improved here. For Haley's going to ch check top pair. Might be a little bit surprising. Very connected flop. Yadio, every reason to think his hand is best now with that jack and ace kicker. He will fire away. Nataran is enjoying the symmetry of his two eights or something. And he gets out of the way too. And for Haley will call. That's that pot controlled with the check call. 168,000 in the middle, five of clubs is a pretty big brick on the turn. And having checked the flop, Fahili's going to check the turn as well. And up to Yadio whether he's going to slow down or not. He's going to be a little bit suspicious of Fahili's hand, having raised under the gun and now checking it, but figures maybe he's just trying to get to show down with I don't know, tens or something like that. And fires again with Ace Jack. He'll get called again. 287,000 in the middle for Haley with less than a pot size bet left. <laughs> and the very disappointing, from his point of view, Jack of Diamonds on the river. Great card for Yadio. It's just perfectly possible that Yadio has some kind of draw that's missed. He's now bluffing his way out of it. And the way this hand has played, you would think that for Haley is going to be in trouble here. 
Yadio moves all in. Vohaly is really under-repped this top pair. Tough to make the fold, but gets away from it. Well, pretty stellar lay down. Nice read from Vohaly. Yadio with the best hand after that very nice river card takes it down. We'll move on to hand 186. Blinds are up 7,000, 14,000, and we've got lots of action. Ride and IUK is all in. For Haley is all in. And what do you do with pocket nines in this situation? For Haley's shove is about 20 big blinds. Come on, top deck has a chance to knock out two players and will try and take it. So. We'll have a three-way pot with no more betting. Two players all in. And here's how it shakes down. Come on top deck, a favourite to eliminate both the other players. Ride Nuke. I'm going to try a variety of pronunciations of that one. And for Haley, looking for improvement. And Ride Nuke gets it. No diamonds in any of the three hands. For Haley is still going to be eliminated here unless he improves and he does not. So... Come on, top deck will win the side pot, knocking out for Haley. Running UK will triple up. That's a fun one, but not for four Haley. The yeah, exact opposite. Seventh spot for the Russian player. $22,000 from the prize pool and $7,000 in bounties. His haul from event 10 of the scoop. Hand 192. Things have really kicked off this level. Yadio in a really nice spot here, opening from the cutoff with the big hand. And Tarrant will defend King-10. And these two have already had one hand that we've watched when a Tarrant got lucky. He may well do it again. Flop the straight draw. Yadio in command right now, as you can see. Well... Taran check called his middle pair before. He's now going to look like he's going to check call with this draw, but not impossible. He's thinking about raising. Yadier with ace king. Not without value on this flop, is it? Does have the two over cards and can catch a 10 to make Broadway. And he's going to go ahead and fire. We'll see how Nataran wants to play this. Whether he's check calling or thinking about raising, he does call. And we'll see a turn card. And it's kind of the turn card and Taran wanted. Makes him Broadway. Yadio improves his hand. Of course, doesn't know that that card is uh, not a great one for him at all. Diamond draw does come in. Don't think that will affect things too much. But Yadio will check back here. Maybe pot control a little bit. Try and get paid off on the river by... A worse one pair hand. Three of hearts on the turn doesn't change anything. The Taran knows that he is a mile in front here after Yadio checking that turn. And should be a pretty straightforward value bet, you'd think. Yeah, 81,000 into 136. And Yadio with the decision. Really, it's not too much of a decision, is it? It's just a lot of hands that Taran can have there. Yadio makes the call with top pair. And Taran twice now has outdrawn Yadio. And here's your reward. Aces versus ace-king. Things are going the Swedish player's way. Taran with a pre-flop cooler to go with this sort of little post-flop coolers. Rydnik, the unlucky player here. He three bets. Starting the hand with a little bit over 30 big blinds with ace-king in late position, short-handed. That's just no fun for Ride Nuke. He's uh, really in a horrible spot here and has no way of knowing it right now. A Tarrant with the four bet, and this is cut-off versus buttoned, could just really easily be an attempt to fight back, an attempt at a bluff. 
And even if it was a uh, a decent hand, Ace King obviously more than good enough to get the money in here. In it goes exactly what the Taran wanted to see. Ryden, you can real trouble here. Almost a million chip pot and the Taran a big favourite to win it. That flop doesn't help too much. Running spades would get Ryden Uke out of this, but the Jack of Diamonds locks it up. Now, Taran is going to take down this million chipper and he's going to knock out Ryden Uke. From Lithuania, out in sixth spot, $28,800 for him and 7000 in bounties, leaving us five-handed in event 10. Now, we'd love you to play the Scoop main event on us in order to have a shot at 30, yes, 30 free seats that are up for grabs. You need to register for the Scoop free roll. It goes down on May the 25th at 2.15 Eastern Standard Time. Your password is 100, the number, and billion, the, the number that written, 100 billion. These five players will be scoring enough money to buy into that main event at all three levels if they like. Enjoy it. They've already locked up some serious change, but they're going for a scoop title. And there would be some changes over the next period of hands. Nataran would take the chip lead, him and come on top deck, as you can see, more or less even on just over a million. The other three scrapping together uh, on shorter stacks. We're rejoining it at hand 275, 10,000, 20,000 blinds. And the three in the pack, all with around about the 20 big blind level. So an interesting dynamic with the two big stacks and the rest. Of course, the blinds and is pretty big now. Only takes one double up for any of the players at this final table to be near the chip lead. Now, you might have noticed Nataran folding sixes under the gun there. He's almost certainly thinking about those three stacks behind him. They're perfect reshoving stacks. Must have decided he doesn't want to open and have to call off with pocket sixes in that spot. Yadio will make the steal move. From, oh, no, excuse me. He'll limp. Controversial. Changing it up here is Yadio. Come on, top deck. We'll check back. And we'll see an unraised flop. Interesting one as well. Come on, top deck. We'll catch top pair here. Yadio with the bigger hand, bottom pair, and the straight draw. As you can see, a slight favorite if the money went in now. I should mention, come on top deck, by the way, it's a fantastic record. Second uh, scoop final table in his career. He's also made final tables in the Sunday 500, the Super Tuesday, and he's won the Sunday warm-up. So no stranger to big final tables. And uh, he's, as you can see, doing extremely well in this one. Now, we'll see how this goes down. Yadio puts in the bet. Interesting one for these players to read, especially come on top deck. What does he think of Yadio's button limp? Well, he thinks top pair is probably good. And most of the time he's right. Makes the check raise. Wouldn't be the biggest surprise in the world to see Yadio get the money in here, would it? But he decides to flat call. So really playing this... And a little bit uh, differently. And come on, top deck makes top two. So he was probably reasonably confident he was ahead anyway. He's now going to be extremely confident. 6 9 making top two. And he bet 69,000. Just must love 69,000. Yadio with the decision. Very strange pot, isn't it? Because Yadio didn't pre-flop raise. Just called the check raise on the turn. And you sort of wonder how this hand looks from Yadio's point of view. Well, he's going to put the money in. He obviously thinks he has some fold equity here. We can see he definitely doesn't. He knows that now. Big river card for Yadio. Needs to catch something to stay alive here. And he does. Makes the straight. Well, of course, he was putting the money in with outs there and uh, caught one on the river. Terrible river card for come on top deck. That was the difference between him having a commanding chip lead and being back in the pack, which is where we find him as we watch hand 288. Has the ace king, though. I'll make the raise. Nataran has extended his chip lead a little bit, up to over 1.2 million now. And super kid. Bam! Who we haven't seen in action in this highlight show. I promise you he has been in action over the 288 hands. 
And now he's really in action. Makes the shove. Has 12 big blinds. And come on, top deck will make the call. Pretty easy call for him. Super Kid Bam in trouble. Needs some help here. Bam! 10 on the flop. Sorry, that's what he does when he catches cards. Just trying to make him feel at home. He's outdrawn. Come on, top deck here. And he fades the turn and river. And Super Kid is back in this. From 12 big blinds to just over 25 big blinds. Pretty big difference. And a couple of nasty spots for Come on, top deck. Been outdrawn twice. Nothing he could do, of course. He's gone from, uh, well, thinking seriously about clinching the big chip lead to being the second shortest stack at the table. Fine battle here between Come On Top Deck and Tarrant. Top Deck has just uh, limped the small blind. Tarrant's going to raise with nines. And I wonder if oh, I didn't quite get it. <laughs> I was wondering if Tom on Top Deck was thinking about shoving. I think that was his plan all along with fours. He's just been really unlucky to run into nines. So often he's going to get a fold there after the big blind raises. But on this occasion, he's dominated. So this final table's really cooled off. Come on, top deck. Three nasty spots for him. And he needs to catch a four here. Or his tournament is over. No other way out of this. Just a four on the river. Or he's done. And the UK player, very unlucky. Really horrible series of hands and spots for him. Come on, top deck. Finishes in fifth spot. He wins $36,000. He does have the consolation of collecting the most bounties in the tournament. 15 of them. He really was going through this like a juggernaut at one point. So $15,000 from the bounty pool as well. We will continue without him. We're four-handed. Still playing 10000 20000 And Super Kid Bam will open with the Ace-9. And Jectis with the present. Two red kings, pretty nice when you're down to just over 10 big blinds to find two kings and a raise in front. Super Kid basically has to call this with the Jack Tiss's stack as it was. And Jack Tiss trying to get the kings home, but doesn't look like he's going to do it. Ace on the flop is a big bam. Bad news for Jack Tiss. Only a king on the river can save him. Two of hearts doesn't get it done. Well, the perils of being a short stack. You have to get your hands home when you're all in. Jectis doesn't get this one home. He does, however, get fourth place money. The German takes home $51,500 and also knocked out eight players for an $8,000 share of the bounty pool. And all of a sudden, after a lot of hands with not too much happening, the blinds have got to the point where we're seeing some showdown action here. And we are three-handed quickly. The tower and three betting the eights. Super Kid starting this hand with a little bit more than 32 big blinds. He may well flat call here or do that. Flat calling not an option. He decides, puts the money in, and the Taran is going to call it off. So we're going to have a big flip here. This is an important one. Super Kid needs to catch to stay alive. A Taran will be a big favourite in the heads up if he doesn't. Queen of Spades is no help. He can counterfeit Nataran as well as his obvious outs, but not with a seven. So Nataran's eights hold up. He knocks out Super Kid Bam from Sweden. $68,500 for third and 9000 from the bounty pool. A really great haul for the Swedish player. And it leaves these two players for the heads up. Nataran, a huge favourite on the chip stacks. More than a five to one lead as we join the action. Hand 314 then. Yadio is going to open from the button with a suited connector. And the Taran with a big hand. He's going to three bet his ace queen here. 92 and a half thousand. And Yadio is going to shove here. Well, he's got some fold equity. And he's got a hand that he can improve if he does get called. We can see he's going to get called. No hesitation from the Taran with the ace queen. If this holds up, he wins the title. May not, though. Six on the flop from Yadio changes things. He vaults the lead. Two of spade, no help. Natara needs to catch an ace or a queen to win it, or we play again, and we're going to play again. So Yadio with the semi-bluff shove 
gets called and Nataran can't get his ace queen home. He's going to have to win event number 10 all over again. Yadio trying to fight back here and some play now in this heads up match. Yadio is the short stack. We're playing 12 and a half, 25. So he does have sort of 44 big blinds here. So we're going to, we're going to play some poker. 10-9 is a favourite on this flop for Yadio with the flush draw against the Tarrant's ace high. Taran electing to just flat call the opening race. Still has a two to one chip lead, as you can see, despite losing that all in confrontation. Adio will continue. No deal at this final table. These two playing heads up for the money. $35,000 there or thereabouts, the difference between first and second. And that's an amazing card for Yadio. Not only does he make the flush, but his opponent improves a little bit as well. Taran will check. It's really nice for Yadio, the way this has gone down. Heads up, just no way Nataran believes that he ever has the flush here, I don't think. He'll bet just under half pot. Tarrant thinking about it. It would be a surprise if he did anything other than call here, but we'll see. It does make the call. 360,000 and change heading to the river. Yadio doesn't want another heart, does he? Because well, he'll take that. Trips are his opponent. So Tarrant knows that he beats any one pair hand Yadio was betting. Yadio will be trying for value here. What would you bet? A little bit over 200,000 maybe. We'll see what he thinks he can get paid. A little bit under 200,000, contrarian. Fine, don't listen. Taron with trips here. You wonder if he'll be thinking about raising. I guess there's not too much he can get paid by. And he does just flat call. And uh, be interesting if that four hadn't come, he may well have check called anyway. Bizarrely, one of those situations where it might not have changed how it went down. But a really important pot for Yadio. And as we watch hand 338, he has the chip lead. Amazing comeback. It was just one board run out from it all being over. And in a heads up battle like this, you know, it depends on the player, but not impossible that Nataran will be a little bit frustrated right now tilt and emotional control even just a small amount of tilt such a big factor in heads up matches the Taran is staying aggressive three betting the jack seven Yadio will flat call and a nice hand on the button and a paired board well, nobody believes anybody has anything on a pair board. That's just fact. Yadio will probably be liking things in this hand. Pretty nice flop for his hand. Pretty unlikely to have improved Nataran. And uh, I think he'll be thinking his ace high is ahead a lot of the time here. Obviously, we're heads up. Nataran are three betting a ton of different hands. Well, as you can see, Jack Seven Suited qualifies as a ton of different hands, doesn't it? Big heads up match for both these players. Not too many times they'll have played heads up for $35,000 in their career, but also calls for the scoop title and that very fetching watch. Four of spades on the turn changes nothing. And this is just a case of how many bullets does Nataran want to fire? Could be reasonably confident that Jack High isn't good right here, but how deep does he want to get with this? 
500,000 in the middle. And he will shut it down. And you thought Yadio would be reasonably relieved to see a check. I mean, he'll know that his ace high is winning a lot of the time on the flop, but still not a lot of fun to call off one or two more bets here. Yadio checks it back. We'll see the river card. Nataran does have outs. There's one. Ah, it's a funny game sometimes. Not so funny if you're Yadio in this hand. It's an important card for Nataran, isn't it? Because he had that big, big chip lead, came close to winning this thing, and, you know, would be understandably a little bit frustrated. This hand would have only compounded that after trying to three bet and trying to strong arm his way through. And now he gets to bet for value on the river. And Yadio will raise him. Wow, great stuff on this river from Yadio. Can he get this bluff through? He called the flop. They checked the turn. Yadio doesn't believe his ace high is good anymore. He's trying to get Nataran off exactly the kind of hand he has. A vulnerable... Well, it's two-pair hand, isn't it? But the pair in his hand to match the board and the queens. A lot of different hands like that. And he does get him to fold. Well, that's the hand of this tournament. And it may well earn Yadio a victory. It certainly extends his chip lead to a meaningful number. Really, really great stuff from the Canadian. That was a fun one. Tough to see that coming as well. Taran forced to lay down the best hand, a cataclysmic hand for him in his tournament. He can still come back, of course, as we watch hand 382. Still has a decent chip stack, not in good shape here. And in way worse shape, well, this is just a cooler, horrible for Nataran. And uh, I think you can write this one off. Yadio's going to win this tournament unless Nataran gets super lucky or unless somehow they don't put the money in. Absolutely ridiculous flop. This does not happen very often. Both players flopping two pair. I don't think Yadio's deep enough, uh, Nataran's deep enough for the money ever to not go in here. Yadio will certainly be trying. That's the flop. Nataran, well, in a real fool's flop situation, isn't he? We'll be trying to figure out how to get paid. It's going to be devastated when the hands get turned over. Came into this heads up with a five and a half to one chip lead. Doesn't look like he's going to be able to bring it home. Yadio's earned it, of course. He's played some fantastic poker, not least that last river bluff raise. That was pretty sexy. Right here, he's just got super lucky. He's going to flat call. But as you can see, Nataran, not too many more chips to work with. And the irony is he'll be trying to get the money in. He should be trying to get the money in, shouldn't he? Big, big hand heads up for him. Just not quite big enough. 400,000 in the middle. Two flush draws on board. I doubt if these two will want to hang around anymore from both their points of view. They'll probably try and get the money in here. Taran bets 180. Yadio thinking about it. But he is going to put him in. Nataran will fist pump call and then use the fist to smack his monitor, I'd imagine. Really, really nasty flop for him. He can get out of it. A three for the win, a queen for the chop, or Yadio takes down this scoop. And he does. Four of diamonds brings it home. A real cooler at the end. But some great poker before that from Yadio from Canada. He is your Event 12 scoop champion. He takes home the title, the watch. And the small matter of $127,000 and change, plus another $7,000 in knockout bounties. A fantastic final table from Yadio, a well-earned victory. Condolences to Nataran, who looked like the big favourite to win for so much of the lesser stage of the final table. He has to be content with second, 92k and 7,000 from the bounty pool. And it's a Sweden 2 and 3 with Super Kid. Bam! finishing in third i hope you enjoyed the final table highlights from event number 10 lots more scoop to come building to that big main event i hope you're getting involved satellites running 24 7 for next to no money no excuse to miss out on this fantastic tournament series we'll see you for another one soon i'm nick wealth for everyone at pokestars.tv take big care